This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Let's say that you want to get a pet snake. Well, this happens to be a lavender albino reticulated python. I'm going to be honest with you. I certainly wouldn't say that this would be a first pet snake for you by any means. Although reticulated pythons, as you can see, can be amazing animals and oftentimes are portrayed as monsters or killers, and they are far from that. The truth is, I'm going to talk about entry level pet snakes. So if you want to get your first or second snake, we're going to talk about the best options for you. My name is Brian Barczyk. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week I'll be talking about what the best pet snakes are. You're watching Snake Bites. Of course, whenever anyone asks what's a great pet snake, most people are going to answer ball pythons and corn snakes, which I totally agree, but I don't want to start this show about that. I'm going to talk about them later in the show. I'm going to give you guys a couple other options and give you kind of the pros and cons to them. Like for instance, hognose snakes, in particular western hognose snakes, because western hognose are typically rodent feeders, whereas the eastern hognose, although some will switch over to rodents, most of them want frogs. And let's face it, if you want a pet snake, it's pretty hard to keep feeding them frogs, right? Well, western hognose snakes, as you can see, are really cool animals. They've got so much personality, and of course, they've got that little pug nose that makes them really cute. They don't get much larger than this. This is an adult female. Now, again, they can get quite a bit larger if you really have old ones that have been fed a lot. They're really great handlers. Now, they're not constrictors, which is interesting. So when you're handling them, they're not gripping onto you like a constrictor snake. But again, they have amazing personalities. They typically typically are really aggressive feeders and they will typically never bite. I've been working with hognose for probably 15 years and the only time I've ever been bit by one is when they think I'm food. Now here's the downside to western hognose snakes and you can see sometimes they'll do that bluff strike but they actually do it with their mouth closed just like that one just did. But the downside is is that some people do have a reaction to their saliva. As a matter of fact, some people even think that these are rear fang venomous snakes, which may be the case because really venom is just of advanced saliva. These guys don't have a delivery system for their venom or saliva, but if they really, really chew on you, sometimes it can get in those back teeth, you can get a little bit of a reaction. And some people have even had their whole hand swelled up. Now, typically, I've been bit enough times where I've never had a reaction, and no one here at our shop has had a reaction, but it is something you'll want to consider if you ever think of getting a hognose snake. In particular, if you want a kid to get a hognose snake, we don't want anything to ever happen. But again, they'll only bite typically when they think you're food. So as long as you have them up and they don't think you're food, they're wonderful animals. And what's really cool is that there's a bunch of different paint jobs or color phases too. Like things like this silver and black azanthic hognose that's just really gorgeous. And of course there's albinos and there's a couple different types of albinos. This is like the orange albino or just the normal albino amelanistic animal. And wow, that's a gorgeous one. And this was really kind of the first mutation when it came to hognose snakes that really kind of pumped hognose to the kind of level of excitement that people have now. And of course there's actually pattern and color mutations kind of like this anaconda hognose snake. Now the anaconda hognose were named anaconda because they have this kind of dotting down their back much like the green anacondas. Now this is a co-dominant mutation that when bred together you can get a superconda which is completely patternless and of course it's a recessive albino just like the first animal I showed you. But there's actually a couple different albino believe it or not. There's what they call pastel pink albino, which is not the same as the albino. It's more of a pink color and you can kind of see it right here. And when you breed the pink albino into the normal orange albino, you'll get normal babies so they're not compatible. So they're kind of a perfect little animal with the exception of the potential reaction to a bite. They're small, they're placid, they got great personality, there's lots of color phases. I tell you, I love them and I think they make great pets. Another more unusual pick when it comes to a pet snake 
is a Kenyan sand boa. Let's say you want a boa, but you don't want something that's gonna get eight or nine or 10 foot long. A Kenyan sand boa can be a really great option for you. These guys only get about 36 inches long as females, and believe it or not, males typically only stay about 18 inches long. This would be like an adult size for a male. So it's kind of the perfect size. They're really easy to breed. If you ever wanna try your hand at breeding, they're live bearers, so you don't have to worry about eggs or incubation or anything like that. They have anywhere from 12 all the way up to 35 babies, which is pretty cool. And they're really gorgeous animals. They're a little bit unusual because they act a little bit different. You can see when they strike, they strike sideways just like that. Typically, they're pretty docile, but every now and then they can get a little fired up. But typically, if you do handle them quite a bit as a pet, they're gonna really tame out tremendously. And <laughs> look at that little guy go. He's just fired up. But again, what they do is they always strike that way. And again, just like the hog nose snake, there's a bunch of different really colorful mutations in them as well. Like say for instance, aneurythristic sambo is right here. Now this is actually a gravid female. She's really small, but she is loaded up with babies right now. This is about the smallest I would ever breed a Kenyan. Typically I wait till they're quite a bit larger, but you can see that that's a really gorgeous mutation. And there's even things like albinos or, or this is a really cool animal here if I can find it is a, uh, this is what they call a snow splash Kenyan sand boa. Now the snow is actually an albino and an aneurythristic mix. And then the splash is when they have kind of white splashes, almost like a pied looking thing. And there's quite a few other mutations, striped ones, all kinds of different stuff. So if you want a cool little boa, a Kenyan is an awesome idea. Now the only downside to them, of course, is they are sand boas, which means that they burrow in the sand. And that's why their eyes are on the top of their head there. So they're gonna burrow 100% into the sand and only their eyes are gonna be peeking out and that way when prey comes up, wham, they're gonna hit the prey. Now the downside is if you want a pet that you're gonna be able to look at a lot, Sambo's may not be the best option because they're gonna hide most of the time. But if you can get past that, they're definitely a cool option. So another really cool option when it comes to a pet snake that you really don't see very often are house snakes, the African house snakes. Now I did an entire show on African house snakes a few weeks back that is really awesome. So if you haven't seen it, go back and check it out. Trust me, these are some really cool snakes. And I always say with that little face, they look like miniature pythons, right? So if you want a snake that only gets this big, super easy to care for, as you can see, really placid, this is a great option. I tell you what, I think I think these are one of the most underrated snakes in the hobby, in my opinion, just because they're such great personalities and they're super, super easy to care for. So you don't have to be an advanced keeper to really do well with these snakes. Now, the only thing you're gonna want is to make sure when you get a baby house snake that it's eating well on frozen or live pinkies, preferably frozen pinkies, because they're the easiest to feed, because they can be a little bit finicky when they're babies, but once they get eating, man, these guys are just monsters and they grow like crazy and of course there's really cool mutations of them just like I highlighted in that house snake show things like these albinos I mean just look at the pattern and the color in that animal and of course my good friends Warren and Nicole Klein from Bushveld Reptiles are bringing some really cool house snakes into America pretty soon so there's going to be all kinds of cool mutations that you're going to be able to get from those guys I know I'm going to be on their customer list so when it comes to a cool little snake a house snake is certainly a great option. I tell you, when I was a little kid, I used to go out in the woods and collect garter snakes. That's what we had in Michigan, and that's what I was excited about. So garter snakes have always had kind of a special spot in my heart because these were the first snakes that I really had hands-on experience with. So if you're looking for a pet snake, I tell you what, there's not much better than a garter snake, to be totally honest with you. You know, yeah, they don't get all the glamour of the pythons and the boas, but they have amazing personalities. You can see they're so placid. As a matter of fact, a lot of times you can just be holding a garter snake like this and have a fish or a worm in your hand and they'll take it right out of your hand, but not in a striking way. They'll just kind of eat it. I mean, they are amazing animals animals and oftentimes people don't give them the credit that they have and there's all kinds of species this happens to be a checkered garter snake and of course with the checkers there's several mutations that are pretty cool things even like these albinos which are really striking with that yellow and almost purplish hue I mean these are really really cool and then of course there's like the radix or the plains garter snakes and look at these guys here this is a an albino and take a look at that monkey there she is swollen up with babies and that's one of the things that's really cool about garter snakes too is if you decide to breed them they have live young something like 
a, a Great Plains like this is gonna have probably 18 or 20 babies. Believe it or not, with the checkered garter snakes, I've had 35 babies in a litter. And this is the crazy thing about breeding them. They'll actually double clutch in a year. It's the only live bearing snake that really can have two litters that I'm aware of. So garter snakes are really cool. And the other advantage to them is the fact that let's say you want a snake, but you're really against feeding rodents. You know, I love rodents as much as anybody. So let's say that that's the case. These guys can eat, actually eat fish and worms and they can survive pretty well on that. You have to be careful what type of fish sometimes because some of the issues with it. You can literally raise a garter snake its entire life without ever feeding it a rodent, which is really cool for the people that are opposed to feeding mammals to snakes. So garter snakes, tell you what, so underrated and so awesome. Let's say you want to graduate up to something a little bit larger and you're really a boa fan, but you know, when you're first keeping snakes, a boa constrictor can be a little bit intimidating because, you know, they can get eight or even sometimes 10 foot long in extreme cases. A Brazilian rainbow boa might be a great option for you or even a Colombian rainbow, but the Brazilians are definitely much more gorgeous with that red and unbelievable pattern and that iridescence that makes them so beautiful. They're really a great animal. This is an adult female here, so certainly an animal that's large enough to be impressive, but not so large that one person can't handle it and you're certainly never in danger with something like this. The worst that's going to happen is an accidental bite which is going to just bleed a little bit and it's no big deal. I've been bit a million times by rainbow bows just by accident and it's not a big deal at all. So this is a great option for someone that wants to kind of take that step and maybe the next snake you get is a bigger boa constrictor or something like that. Now the only downside to Brazilian rainbow boas is that I don't really think that new beginner people should probably own these guys. You just need a little bit of experience, and I'll tell you why, is because these can dehydrate really, really quickly, especially a baby. If it's not 50 to 60 plus percent humidity, within a day or two, it can actually completely dehydrate, even if there's a fresh bowl of water in the cage. And if you're not kind of experienced with reptiles, you won't really see the signs, which are typically crinkly eyes, the skin starts to get a little bit more loose, and with Brazilian rainbows, they can go from being healthy to dehydrated and actually perish within two or three days, where most snakes, it might take two or three months to get to that stage. So I always say Brazilian rainbows are awesome animals, but I'd like to see you have a little bit of experience before you take the plunge into something like a rainbow boa. All right, say that you're defiant. Someone like me that just doesn't listen to people and says, you know what, I'm ready for a boa constrictor <laughs> right off the bat, which happened to be the second snake I ever owned. And of course, the first snake was a Burmese python. So you kind of get the idea that, although I may preach and say, hey guys, start small and something like that, I kind of didn't do it right. But really, to be honest with you, if you do want to take the plunge into a boa constrictor and you don't have a lot of experience, boas aren't really that bad. They're one of the bigger snakes that I think could actually be handled by a novice or a beginner, in all honesty, because as you can see, they're really, really docile. Now, this is only about a slightly over a year old Sunglow era best boa. An adult is going to probably get, like I said, about eight to 10 foot long. Now, males will typically only stay about six foot and maybe this big around. Females can get quite a bit larger, so they can be a little bit of a handful, but again, they're not really a dangerous animal. So even if you're a beginner, you don't have to worry about like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm ready for something like this. Now, I'm not saying that a boa constrictor is for everyone. A lot of times you do want to start smaller and work your way to something like a boa, but I don't know, if you've done your research, and after all, with any snake, the most important thing is to do research prior to getting the animal. And if you're really ready for the responsibility of owning a boa or any snake, for that matter, I think that a boa is actually a pretty good choice. And I tell you, I've been keeping boas since I was 15 years old. And although I'm not the best at breeding them, I think they're amazing animals and certainly make great pets. All right, so as promised, I go back to ball pythons and corn snakes, which are certainly the most common answer for the best pet snakes. And it's really true, ball pythons and corn snakes, although they're very different snakes, are probably the two best beginner snakes. And even when you start keeping snakes for a long period of time, they're still really awesome animals to keep. And the reason a ball python is such a great animal is several different things. They're sizable, but yet they're not too big. This is an adult female Mojave here. And 
that's all they get right there, you know? So they're big enough to where they're impressive, but they're not so big that they're scary. And they're just a really cool snake. Now as a beginner, one of the things I hear a lot is the fact that snakes move kind of quick and it's kind of a little bit intimidating. Well, ball pythons, as you can see, they don't move hardly at all. I mean, they'll just kind of sit on you. You can watch TV and sit them on your lap and they're just gonna hang out. As a matter of fact, a lot of people call them the best pet rock snake. And I don't really like that term very much because I think they have a lot of great personality. They're certainly far from a pet rock. I've done a ton of shows on the color morphs or paint jobs of ball pythons, so I'm not gonna bore you with a ton of that, but there are certainly some amazing, amazing paint jobs. Something like this bumblebee banana. I mean, you can pretty much pick almost any color or pattern under the sun. And now ball pythons have gotten relatively inexpensive, which makes it really cool because you can almost get any of these mutations relatively affordable. So I can certainly see why people think that ball pythons are the king of pet snakes, because they really truly are. Certainly for the last 20 plus years, when you ask people what the best snake is, a corn snake is certainly gonna be in the top two or three answers that they're gonna give you. Now, there's a lot of good reasons for that. As you can see, they're extremely beautiful animals and they're very, very placid as well. Typically, if you handle a pet corn snake for any length of time, it's gonna become completely puppy dog tame. They also are readily easy to feed and to breed if you ever decide to take that step. And the one thing that's amazing about them is how polymorphic they are. Over the last 20 plus years in herpetoculture, people have just been breeding amazing color mutations and paint jobs into these guys. There's probably two or three hundred mutation corn snakes from yellow to red to even a purplish hues, blacks and grays, really beautiful colors and patterns, and they're all extremely affordable. That's one of the reasons why corn snakes make such great pets is because you can buy them pretty inexpensive and get one of the most coolest designer snakes and not break the bank. But at the same time, for someone like me that's been working with snakes for close to 30 years, they still pose a tremendous amount of challenges and interest to me. I love working with corn snakes. So there you kind of have it. Some kind of unusual snakes and some of the more common snakes that we would say are cool pet snakes. So whether you're an advanced keeper or a first time snake owner, I hope you've taken a little bit out of this. But the show's not over yet. I recently saw a pretty funny video with a couple guys that were doing things in reverse and then changing it to forward and seeing how close they could actually get it to resemble actually doing things forward. So I decided to put a few of my crew members to the test with some of the things that they do pretty much every day, but this time in reverse and see how funny it is. straightforward but as you can see in order to do this backwards Anthony had to sacrifice himself and go into the dumpster that way when he threw the box out it appeared that Trevor was actually throwing it back into the dumpster when we did it in reverse this one turned out pretty cool How about sweeping the floor in reverse? The only thing that really gave this one away was that we were using the vacuum in reverse to blow the hay instead of pushing it. And of course, the way that the hay kind of things about some cool pet snakes and had a little laugh at my crew at the meantime and as always I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through it so make sure to follow me over at Snakebites TV and on Instagram at snakebites.tv until next week you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi I'm Peter Birch an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes only on Animal Bites TV.